the season continues. They clear house. They're able to hire Adam Peters. Over the last month, they've hired this this young guy, Brandon Saz, who we talked about at length. That's the guy they got from USC. That he was he was kind of the visionary behind getting USC into the Big Ten. He was the guy that was able to get Lincoln Riley to leave Oklahoma and go to SC. Mm-hmm. He's viewed as a serious future power broker in the world uh, on the business side of sports. Yep. Um, and and I think we've just got to look at what they've now built and what Harris is all about is empowering the people he's um he hired he hired and i think when you hire peters and you hire a guy like sasna they're then going to want their people in place and it, the fact that shen more than likely is going to get a job with hbse which is harris blitzer sports and entertainment which is josh harris's other holdings like i don't think there's any hurt feelings or bad blood here I think it was just kind of the evolution of a position when they hired Shen. Let's be real; there was no analytics going on in Ashburn. But it was and, no analytics. But I think we, I think we, we in the sports world, we all jump to conclusions as soon as we see something every time because we never want to be patient and wait. What if Harris hired him as a placeholder, knowing yeah. he was going to move up until he got the other people in place? Because if I hire Adam Peters and let him hire all his people. I'm not going to want somebody else com- com- like competing with him with the analytics aspect of it because Adam has been around analytics himself. himself. So he's going to want somebody that's closer with the mindset he is. And that guy could have been, Chen could have just been a placeholder and sure. them saying we are now moving into the 21st century I, instead of being stuck in a stone age just like they were. I, B, I think Harris got there, looked around, was like, wow. Um, I'm getting somebody in that he has a prior relationship with. Yeah. And yo, I, I think there's a very, I, I think there's a very, very, very strong chance that Shen helps them get from point A to point B. Yeah. Right. And then once they got to where they're, they believe they are now building the team out. They want Shen is a, a, a Shen has accomplished enough that he probably wants to be the authority or whatever it is. And, and, and Brian, I don't know this, but like if, you, if we went through because they posted a number of openings, right? They're hiring a bunch of analytical folks over there. Yeah. If you got a young GM and a young, um, I can't remember what his title is, senior vice president of football operations, the guy Sazna, and you've got a young quarterback and they're all in this thing for the long haul. They want to build a team that competes for a decade, for 15, 20 years. Mm hmm wouldn't you probably want to hire a bunch of young guys or young people to go and attack and build and build everything together? I want to hire whoever is capable of getting me the best analytics and information that I need. I don't care if the guy is 21 or 31, because if he's coming in, I need to make sure his qualifications are there because I don't want to just hire a lot of young people because a lot of the young people don't really understand exactly what's happening at the point. So I may want somebody that's not, excessively old, but a little seasoned. Somebody that who can still at least teach the other people a little bit. You know, I think the people in the top are the ones you need to be concerned about to be able to give the game plan, like Peters and Sosner. Okay, those guys, I don't care if you come in here at 31 or 21, they can give you what the game plan is. And I think that's the most important thing. But this is what you do when you, you, find, you buy something and then – most people just buy and just get rid of people bringing all new people in. You have to learn the new business you're in. And yes, he was involved with owning other franchises from other sports, but the NFL is totally different than the rest of them. So they came in, he hired somebody that he had a relationship with from another football team <laughs> that basically got them to a point where they needed to be while bringing in other folks to take over this thing, knowing he could be your overseer. You know what I mean? So, like, to me, I think this is basically the, the stages you go through in business the right way. Unlike what Dan did, roll in, fired everybody that knew everything about it, hired all these young people, and guess what they've been doing? Every, when The whole time he was here, things was, was worse than it ever was because nobody knew what the hell was going on. I just texted you something, B, that'll um, – but, right, I, I think – we, I think there's a number of things. I think we had this inherent reaction as people that have watched 
the ship of fools in Ashburn for so long to immediately be like, oh, what is this about? Like, I really don't think this thing's a big deal. I, and and even like people that I'm in media with that like we would consider friends, Brian, were texting me last night like, oh, well, why didn't they say this was the plan all along? Maybe they didn't know. But they don't like, have to tell us <laughs> what the plan – like the, the whole thing of it is this, Jay, to be honest with you. I don't think this, in my heart of hearts, this is not very important to the fans, to be honest with you. We make it important to them. They care about what the hell is happening on that football field. Because you know how many people hire and fire people in the front office and do things and they never hear about it? Right. But we talk about it because, first of all, we never had analytics. We had a BS uh, front office. And now someone's coming in, so we 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 bring attention to it. To be really honest with you, give me a hundred uh, fans, they can give a damn about who's running the front office, who's coaching the team, who's playing. That's what most fans care about. But we in this town, as media people, we have talked about all that stuff because it was always lacking in those areas. You know what I mean? So to me, at this point, we got a guy who owned this team, who understands how to run a business, and they're well, trying to get it right. And more importantly, dude, if – so Harris, Tab, Shen, I think largely because they needed somebody to at least figure out where they where they were, right? Like, Harris takes over the team late July. They're playing football already. By the time we get to the trade deadline, they were, what, two and eight, two and seven? And, mm-hmm. and Harris has got to be like, all right, I, I need another metric to figure out what is going on here and who is working damn mm-hmm. and so he gets somebody he knows that can help him get to the end of the season he's like all right i'm rebooting everything I, i'm putting my trust in this guy adam peters the right thing to do what we all should be celebrating is that peters is in charge and if peters decision is hey i'd like to figure out a different way then good have ownership support him mm-hmm. you know what i mean like this is if, if what I've said all along is you want a GM to come in and be in charge mm-hmm. and now they've got it. Yeah. And that's what we should want, dude. And like, we all think Peters is the guy, right? His, what they built in San Francisco, his reputation coming from Denver, um, his reputation, his reputation with Elway, Peyton, John Lynch. I mean, these are hall of fame type dudes or actual hall of famers rather. Let him run his show. This is his operation. Mm-hmm. And See, I, I just, like I, don't, I, I don't think there should be consternation. We go back 15 years ago, okay? The New England Patriots had a staff of people, a staff of analytics people. And when we'll watch New England play, and you'll see they'll have 50 passes one game, and next game they have 50 rushes. And you wonder why they do stuff like that, because they had those people giving it to them. Maybe just maybe they want to do something like that. But in the big scheme of things, I don't think this move is vitally important, to be honest with you, because I, I, we won't know. <laughs> we don't know what the hell, all the analytics stuff they're doing anyway. And I, look, a lot of times I, I turn on radios, I hear people talking analytics, and they say a lot of words that they hear, the key words that they like. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. So ultimately, what we're looking at is. Do you remember when Ron gave the press conference? Yeah, uh, Carson, and he said we looked at the analytics. Yeah, the analytics he didn't know the hell he was talking about because if you looked at him, really, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have brought him in. But see, that's what you what you do today to make yourself seem smarter, try to make yourself seem smarter than the others. You start throwing out the little keywords that you hear, and and I think ultimately none of that stuff is important to really the psyche of a fan because the players, as much as analytics are involved. When a player steps on the field, he ain't thinking about no damn analytics. He's thinking about his ability and what he saw in that film, and he knows based off of certain little key key things and and uh, and things you're giving me, I know what you're about to do. Yeah, I think. Um, let's ask. Let's ask the boys in the aquarium. Um, Jeff. Do you have much of an opinion on Eugene Shen leaving the organization? No, not really. Okay. Uh, Landini? Uh, I do not. Okay. Um, I think 
I, maybe that's how most people reacted. Frankly, that, to me, that's how most people should react. Um, they had a a, num- a series of other announcements that came out yesterday, um, including me. And I think – I don't think we should jump to too many conclusions on this. But weirdly – maybe not even weirdly. I think we probably know why. Uh, when Ron was there, Doug Williams got moved from the personnel side Mm-hmm. To the business side, if you remember, Doug became like Jason, like a, a advisor to Jason Wright. Mm-hmm. Um, Doug is now uh, through a series of announcements made yesterday. Doug Williams, of course, Super Bowl MVP, um, is back on the personnel side of things as a senior advisor to the general manager. Um, that's certainly the headline here. Um, I think that's probably where he belongs. B, I don't know if you feel one. No, way or I, that, I mean. I've heard that stuff, and that was, those things, those moves were made immediately. Okay, right. when the, when real football people stepped in that building, they made real football decisions, and that happened immediately. Now they finally come out and they say what's going on. Some of this stuff has been in place already. Sure, and but they just know, made all the announcements. Yeah, they made the announcements. But like my ultimate thing is, Ron didn't want anybody with any ties or any experience to be in, involved because he wanted to run every damn thing, point blank. Other people look at people with the same level of experience and expertise and say, you know what? I want them as close to me as possible. I think that's how you run stuff. It, it, it was for a long time when we had the other ownership, it basically seemed like there was a separation between what was who built this damn team, who built the, 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 the personality and the prestige of this team. It was a direct conflict between them and those that were in place at the moment. But all of a sudden, these new guys come in and they say, "You know what? Hell, I'm not, I'm not giving them a stiff arm. I'm going to welcome that in because you know I think when I've been on other teams, I've been around other people on other football teams. I've never been involved with. There's a connection between the past and the present and the future. This team shut that off. They wouldn't let Daryl Green come around when Dan was in place. You see what I'm saying?" They all that stuff shows you they didn't get they wanted to try and present this thing as it was them, and that's why it fell the hell apart because they didn't understand what the whole history of this was. People run around to my oh, I was a fan. No, he was no damn fan. Your dad was a fan, he wasn't a fan ever. He he bought the team and he got some money, but no fan of this team. I think I there were so many bad decisions that were made along the way and then you're right like ron ron really tried to close the ranks recreate everything he had in charlotte and then i think ron also cared far too much about media stuff and perception. perception yeah <laughs> um and why you think you need to box out a guy like doug williams because people that don't know doug and, and it's one of the true joys of my life that i've gotten to know doug williams mm-hmm. a little bit over the years here um, like I, I, I think we're friends. We're at least friendly. Like we text each other here and there and, you know, check on, like we, we all have daughters and we all follow each other on Instagram. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, the thought process that you have to remove a fellow like Doug Williams from your football operation is just so mind boggling to me. I'm not suggesting that he needs to be the boss, that he needs to have the full authority to make trades or something, mm-hmm. but a guy with that level of experience and expertise and a lifetime in the game and like a humbleness and a, a, a gentle side to him. Like I, I think a lot of football, like, I mean, dude, I can hand you a sheet of paper with measurements and 40 times and statistics, but like a lot of it is, is a people business. And, and I think Doug can help you on that side. And, yeah. and I, I would never understand. Totally. Why you'd want to get away from that? Um, so I'm, I'm happy to see that. I, I want to run through some of these. Uh, Chris White promoted to director of pro scouting, and, and and to B's earlier point, a lot of this has been done. They were just waiting for the right time to announce it all. Um, some new scouts, some new scouting assistants. Um, two people I want to bring up specifically: um, Sean DeBarbery gets promoted to vice president of football communications. That's a person that like we deal with all the time, and uh, want to congratulate him. And then Rob Rogers. This. This but I what part you just said? Sean. Okay, yeah. I like um, Sean. Yeah, he does a good job, dude. Think about 
since Tony left, Sean was like 25 and had to deal with Trent, Dan, like all the, I mean, think about the craziness that dude has had to deal with from a yeah. media perspective. Um, but this, I think, deserves to be, well, I want to say commended. Um, because let's be real on this, B. Rob Rogers came from Charlotte with Ron Rivera. Okay. Um, Rob Rogers was among the first hires Ron made in Washington. Uh -huh. By all accounts, Rob Rogers does a really good job with the contracts. And if you go and watch some of the stuff the commanders put out um, from the draft, like they, the commanders in-house media had like a really cool, like documentary from the draft where you get to see Peters and Harris and Newmark and Quinn and Joe Witt and all these guys behind the scenes talking as they're making their draft picks. And as they get into like trade mode, they keep talking to Rob about like making the numbers work and he's able to crunch those numbers fast. I believe Rob Rogers went to Harvard. He's clearly a very smart guy. Um, now Rob Rogers title gets changed around a little bit. He's now the vice president of football administration, but Brian, what we saw when Ron got here and he may not have been wrong to do this, but he threw the baby out with the bathwater. Everybody got fired. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and with that, maybe some, maybe there were some people that still had some value that were thrown out. You know what I mean? I, I, I see, I see, at least an honest approach to giving people a chance that Rob Rogers is being retained on this staff. I think we saw it with Martin Mayhew also. Or just Rob and or just Rob and, and uh, Martin both understand and, and are very good at their jobs. Yeah, that's what and I'm saying. And they were not given a chance before, and I think people can see that. That's what I'm saying, and I applaud that people are looking big picture and not, what do we always say? It's the league of self-preservation, right? Step one of self-preservation is get rid of anybody you don't know. This seems like they're they're looking broader than that, and that I applaud. 